So today we're taking a look at Ninja Force, which is Ninjutsu's new web-based software for the new Sora V2. Now, unfortunately, they don't have the exact URL for Ninja Force on the manual. They actually just tell you to go to the main website here. And I hope that this doesn't cause any frustration for anybody, but if you don't know that the web-based software is called Ninja Force, it might be easy to skip over this. And it doesn't specifically say Ninja Force in the manual. So we're just gonna click this here to open it up. And if you want to skip all that trouble, the URL is ninjaforce.co. Once we get here, this is what we're going to be brought to. And then it's just going to ask us to connect the mouse. It's not going to matter if you're wired or wireless. Right now I am wireless. And then we're going to pair the mouse and then connect one more time. So I've changed all the settings back to default. So this is what it's going to look like when you first come in. And then the first thing I do want to show you guys is that this is in fact in beta still. But let's go back to the customizations tab. This is where we're going to change the functions of the buttons or the wheel if we want. And so for example, one of the common questions I've been getting is since there's no DPI button on the mouse, how can I easily change it without the software? And so one of the ways you can do that is to change the function of one of the buttons on your mouse to be the DPI button. So we're going to take the forward side button here, for example, click on that, click the DPI loop, and then just click save. And that's it. So far, the software has been very straightforward, simple, and easy to use. We also have the option of keyboard keys, mouse functions, or macros. So let's move on to our next tab, which is performance. And once again, this is the default settings when you first get the mouse, and you should already be set to 800 DPI. We can change how many stages we want to work with. So let's go with two. The two most common DPIs I personally use, 800 and 1600. So we're going to change that like so. On this page, there's no save button. So it's automatically saved the instant you change it, which is even nicer. And then if we were to purchase the 8,000 Hertz dongle later on, this is where we would change the polling rate. They do have a note over here saying that if you increase the polling rate beyond 1,000 Hertz, it's going to use a lot more CPU resources and may cause frame drops in game. This is one of the reasons why I don't always recommend going beyond 1,000 Hertz is because if your computer can't handle it, you're going to lose frames or you're going to get stutters. Realistically, the latency difference you get from going higher and higher is going to be either milliseconds or fractions of milliseconds, which you can go your entire lifetime playing games and it will never actually make a difference. If your mouse can already go higher and your computer can handle it, by all means. But personally, it's not something I'm going to spend extra cash on. All right, so now the next three settings we have here. By default, the system mode is going to be set to high speed. If we want, we can change this to the competitive mode that's going to automatically turn off motion sync. So what they say is the competitive mode enables higher sensor scanning rate and more stable wireless connection for those that need the best gaming experience at the cost of battery life reduced nearly in half. So that sounds great and all, but I would love more details on that. And as of right now, since I've only had the mouse for about 24 hours, I'm actually still switching through a lot of these settings to see which one I like more. I can notice when motion sync is turned on that the mouse movement is smoother. And I know that there is in fact a tiny bit more latency when motion sync is turned on, but I believe it was only a few milliseconds. So I have seen arguments online for motion sync being off and on that some people do say it's better to have that tiny bit less latency. And then others have said that the latency difference is so small and insignificant that it's better to have it on and have that extra smoothness. As of now, it's something I'm still playing around with and I'm trying to test out, but I want to be honest and not give out any recommendations unless I have a very definitive answer. And then last setting we have here is LOD or lift off distance. This is the distance at which your sensor will register your mouse pad at. The default is set to low and low is going to be one millimeter and then high is going to be the two millimeters. And so the next tab we have over here is going to be for setting macros. And so with macros, you can set everything manually if you want, or there's a record feature as well, which makes it nice and easy. And then you can press and click anything you want. When you're done, just press the red button. And so the last two tabs actually don't even do anything. This one here looks like it's going to be to change the language. And then this one over here is to change or update your firmware. And at this time, I can't even click on it. This software has actually been really nice. It's so simple and so straightforward. There was no tutorial at all, but I immediately knew how to set everything up. We do also have the battery readout here. The first night after usage, I did leave the on switch on overnight and then coming back the next day, the battery percentage was exactly the same. And so that's very common with a lot of wireless mice today. An extremely small gripe I guess I do have is that when you do come back to the mouse after it's gone to sleep is that it does not automatically turn on when you move the mouse. You have to click down on one of the buttons. Super tiny complaint. That's not even a complaint, but just something I wanted to share. Now, personally, I do not use Edge or Chrome, which is required for this web-based software. And so there is one important tweak I want to share with you guys in order to always get maximum performance out of your game. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to open up the task manager here and we can see Edge is running in the background. And the problem is that when we close Edge, and I'm not sure if it's the same for Chrome, but when you close Edge, 
you'll see it actually doesn't close Edge at all. It's still running in the background. And the more stuff you have running in the background of your computer, the more likely there's gonna be frame drops and or stutters. So this is the kind of stuff we wanna prevent and stop from happening altogether. And so you could right click and end tasks on each one of these, but that's a hassle to do each and every time. So what you can do is you go back to Edge, go to the settings over here, and then we're going to go to system and performance. And then we're going to disable the top two here. Turn off startup boost and turn off continue running background extensions and apps. And then let's go back to our task manager. And now we're going to close it this time. And now it should close completely. As you can see, it is nowhere in sight. So yeah, that's Ninja Force, the new web software for the Sora V2. And I'm loving that these companies are going towards web-based software. Even if I have to use a browser that I usually don't use, I prefer that a thousand percent over having to download new software and having more bloat on my computer. So big props to Ninjutsu for going that route and hopefully many other companies follow soon as well. I need to show you guys something that is even more important than the software itself. If you haven't already done this, you absolutely need to turn off mouse acceleration in your Windows settings, which is on by default. And if you never turned it off it's going to be on right now mouse acceleration is really bad because it's exactly like it sounds it literally accelerates your mouse further than what you intend it to do based on the speed of the mouse go to the search bar here type in mouse mouse settings click on additional mouse options and then by default this is going to be checked enhanced pointer precision that is mouse acceleration and so if you never turned it off it's going to be checked like this which is bad and let me show you guys what i'm actually talking about i'm going to turn this off really quick and then I'm gonna open up my mouse movement recorder. So this program's really cool. And what it does is it's counting the pixels of the movement of the mouse to make sure everything's one-to-one. -one. So if I try to move it outside the screen, I get these red or green marks. And so this tool is great to make sure my mouse is tracking properly or if I'm having any kind of issues. So you can see when I'm moving it in the center of the screen, I'm not getting any of those marks. When I turn this on, you can see it's all over the place. It's accelerating my mouse pointer and my aim much further than where I want it to go. This could be why your aim sucks and it's not your fault if you never knew about it. This is absolutely vital if you've never turned this off. So we're going to turn this off. Make sure you click apply. Okay. And then you're done. This tool is great and it comes with an old mouse fix that's no longer necessary anymore. But if you want to check that out, be sure to check the description. So the other thing is that I really recommend that you have this slider here set to the default setting of six or six notches from the left. If you've never touched this before, it's probably already there at six. And if you're not sure, just count really quick. And then the reasoning is going to be the same. When we put it to something besides six, we get all these pings on the mouse movement recorder over here. So just make sure it's at six, click apply and okay. A common reason why people change that slider is because they want a custom DPI, but there's a better way to counter it. And so that's gonna be with a free program that I recommend called Raw Excel. And this program has a lot of cool features for your mouse, but the one we're gonna be using is just a very simple one on the top and that's a sensitivity multiplier. So let's say I wanna double my DPI. All I have to do is half my sensitivity here. And now it's cut down by half. This is great too, because you can fine tune it to whatever you want. And you have a lot more flexibility to work with compared to just that slider. So I've run into a very small annoyance with the new Sora V2 and the problem I'm having is the slot here for the USB-C cable is too small for most cables. It works fine for the cable that it came with of course but then out of these other four cables that I have here it only works with one other cable and this is for the Wooting 60HE. So any other cable the plug here needs to be very very small and very thin otherwise it's not going to go and even this one here is a very tight fit and this was just a little bit frustrating because before all of these other mice and cables were all interchangeable. So for example, this one here is for the Viper V2 Pro. This works just fine with the G Pro X Super Lite 2. And then you might have noticed, but this cable over here, this cable is for the GPX2. I actually chopped away at this one because this material is softer. So now it does fit with the Sora V2, but I definitely don't recommend chopping up your cables by any means. But the freedom and the convenience is definitely nice. Ideally, if they can make this slot a little bit taller and wider, that would be great. But you can already see they're almost out of space. So there may not be a whole lot they can even do about it. But I wanted to let you guys know so you're at least aware that you might be stuck using the cable that it comes with. Other than that, everything else has been great and I have no other complaints. And it's still too early for me to fully recommend this mouse because it's only been 24 hours. But stay tuned for more in the future after I've spent more time with the mouse. So now I'm just gonna go over some of the questions I've been getting online. The first question asks, would you say that the Sora V2 is the best mouse to buy right now? Now I think it's actually impossible to label any mouse as the quote unquote best mouse simply because everybody's gonna have a different hand size and everybody's gonna have 
have a different grip style. Because of that, there are way too many factors to determine that there's one single mouse that's best for everybody. When talking to people about mice, one of the most common questions I'll ask them is what is your hand size? And then what is your grip style? Those two pieces of information are absolutely crucial in trying to determine which mouse is right for you. Mini mice are going to have a normal size and then also a mini. And then some mice like this one here, the Sora V2 is designed more specifically for claw grip. And that's because the hump is more focused in the back to fill the back of the palm when your fingers are clawed and curved around a mouse. Other mice are going to be much flatter and smaller if you prefer to fingertip grip where only the tips of your fingers are touching the mouse. And then the third most common grip style is going to be a palm grip where your palm and your fingers are all flat together on the mouse. So unfortunately, there's no easy answer. There may be a best mouse for you, but it'd be very dishonest of me to try to label any one mouse as the best mouse. There are mice that have better features or less weight or better sensors or nicer colors, but a lot of it's going to boil down to what you're looking for personally. And so because it's actually still very early on and I've only had the Sora V2 for about 24 hours, I honestly can't even recommend it at this time because I haven't had enough time to really use it and see if everything is functioning flawlessly. And that's why in my first video, I actually say wait just to make sure that there's no issues that might appear in the next weeks or months. I will say that everything with the Sora V2 so far has been fantastic and I haven't had any problems whatsoever. And if it stays that way, I'm definitely going to recommend this mouse, but I want to give it a little bit more time before fully recommending it. Okay, so next question I've seen a couple times and it's asking if the pulling rate can go higher if using a USB-C cable. I've tried it. I've tried it with the cable it comes with and I've tried it with other cables. It cannot go higher than 1000 Hertz, even when using, let's say the GPX2 cable, which can go up to 2000 Hertz. And it seems to be locked within the software as well until you make that purchase of getting their separate dongle. So next question asks, which mouse would you recommend? The Sora V2, the Lamzu Atlantis Mini, the Pulsar X2, or the OP18K? By the way, my grip is claw and my hand size is 17.5 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So now that he gave me that extra info, I can definitely recommend something a little bit more tailored for him. And like I just said, I'm not gonna recommend the Sora V2 right now simply because it's too early on. The Pulsar X2 is not something I recommend at all. Pulsar is actually having quality control issues at this moment. So I would not recommend getting any mouse from them. I actually just made a whole video on Pulsar very recently. So if you want more information on that, be sure to check it out. So then that leaves the Lamzu Atlantis Mini or the op one k And I think they're both great options. The big difference between the two is going to be the shape. And then the fact that the Atlantis Mini is going to be wireless. And then the op one k is going to be wired. Shape is also tricky to determine. So you can use websites like Elo Shapes or Artings to try to help determine what the shape might be like. But the best way to go about it is to go to your local electronic stores and see if they have these mice on demo so you can actually hold them in hand. The OP1 does obviously go up to 8K Hertz, but for me, that would not be the deciding factor between the two. Next question asked is how long does the battery last? I don't know yet. It's advertised to be 80 hours and I have done battery tests in the past. So if that's something you guys want to see, be sure to let me know. But so far, at least in the last 24 hours, any percentage change I've seen in the battery seemed very, very normal. Next question says, would weight modding bring this down to like 30 grams? I could definitely see that happening and I'm already thinking about it. So the lightest weight skates that came with the mouse was one and a half grams. If we replace those with dot skates, we can maybe cut out another half gram to a gram. If we change out the battery to one with a smaller capacity, that could definitely cut it down quite a bit. And the Sora V2 has no holes in it whatsoever. And so I'm sure people like Bearded Bob might go crazy with it to see how far they can cut down the weight. So yeah, I can definitely see 30 grams or close to 30 grams happening. All right, so once again, I'm still a very small channel. And at this time, I'm still able to answer every comment I get on YouTube. So if you guys have any more, feel free to ask and I'll get to them as quickly as possible. But I hope this helps and thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it.